Hey y'all, it's Elizabeth here, Bridget's Well. I wanted to do a video on my relationship with my matron goddess, Bridget. Um, I haven't done one yet. Uh, I've only I've been on YouTube for about six months, and it just have not has not quite felt right. Um, so I feel like it's time for me to talk about my relationship with her and how I came to know that she was. Well, that I was hers, I guess, really is the right way to say it. Um, I also wore my hair down just to show everybody I do have some hair, but it's probably going to go up pretty quickly because it's a little warm in this room. And, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> um, I'm actually burning some Bridget incense. You kind of see over here. Um, Lady Jane's Bewitchery, which her incense is amazing. I'm going to do a review video on that at some point. Um. But anyway, let's get started. So, my relationship with Bridget. Um, see, I told you, the hair's got to go up. I'll be right back. Okay, back. I tried. I tried to have my hair down. It just irritating me. So anyway, my relationship with Bridget and how I came to know that I was hers is kind of a long, drawn-out story. I'm going to try to make it as concise as possible, but also keep in the details that I think need to be shared and you know I, I know there's people who don't share their goddess and God information and that, I think that's fine but for me for some reason being open and sharing with people I think is part of the reason why I'm doing this channel you never know who might watch your video who might see something that you've said and recognize it within themselves or in their own life. You never, I mean, you should never know. So, um, that's part of the reason why I'm so open about things. I mean, I don't share everything in my life, obviously, but there are things that I'm definitely willing to be open about. And, uh, this is one of them. So when I first started back, um, on the pagan path back four years ago now, I'm guessing four years ago, three years ago, I don't remember. Yeah, I think so. I took a year and a day class um, just because I wanted to learn some basic things. And a lot of it I already knew. Um, it wasn't, it was more of a refresher, I guess, and meeting new friends and that sort of thing. So we went through the class and you weren't required to pick a deity, but we did talk about deities and um, that sort of thing, matrons, patrons. And at the time I was going through the class, um, I thought the Morgan was calling me, which didn't really fit, you know, because I'm not, it just didn't fit. Um, but at the time I thought, well, she's calling me. She must be my, I must be hers. You know, I've always loved everything Irish. Um, and at the time I really thought that I was hers, even though it was kind of like, I'm not really a hardcore type of person. I'm not saying that you have to be to be with the Morgan, but it just wasn't quite a right fit. Um, however, and of course, now that I have the relationship I have with the, with the matron goddess, who is my goddess, it's totally different. And I, I totally get the feeling of how it feels to belong or be, um, the child of a specific deity. So, um, anyways, I thought the Morgan was my goddess. Um, and I guess, um, but I didn't really have that strong, strong connection. I even got a tattoo. My cat wants in. I even got a tattoo and the dog. <laughs> my critters are loud. Anyway, I even got a tattoo of crows on my arm, which I'm going to do a video at some point about sacred tattoos because all my tattoos have meanings. Um, which... It's got crows and it's a Celtic knot. So, which I realized that crows are also, can also be associated with Bridget too. So, anyway, um, got the tattoo and all that and had bought, you know, a bunch of Morgan stuff, books and things to learn more about her, deepen that connection. But it really never really connected the way that I now know what it feels like to be connected. So, um, the way that I found that Bridget was my god. Well, I always say she's my goddess, which she is, but I feel like I'm hers. So the way that I 
discovered that is a little different than probably most people's um, experiences. So if you've seen any of my videos before, I am a channel and I started out channeling about six years ago doing channeled writing. Now I don't really call it automatic writing what I do. Um, I'm aware of what's coming through the pen. I'm not just like sitting there, you know, with my eyes closed. Um, but the information does not come from me. Um, I feel that it comes from outside of me somewhere else. So, and I'm just the conduit. So <clears throat> I was, and I'd been doing this at that point, I guess this was two years ago almost now. So this would have been 2015. Um, was at, and I'd done this professionally. I've done it at festivals. So I've, you know, I've done it for clients, that sort of thing. I was, I, I'm the person, people know me in the community. Um, and I was at uh, Maven Ritual with the group that I do most of my rituals with, Spiral Grotto here in Nashville. And the high priestess was channeling Odin during the ritual. Just for anybody who was there who had any questions, wanted to talk to Odin, that sort of thing. I didn't even realize that before this that you could channel deities. I I never heard of that. And I was it was really it was a really cool experience. Well I had asked Oh, and we have window air conditioner units in this house, so if you hear a loud noise, that's probably what that is. So I'm hoping it's not going to be too loud. Um, I apologize. So, during that channeling, I had asked a question, and I think it was just like, what does, what do I need to know? It wasn't very specific, it was very general, and I don't remember everything that Odin told me, but toward the end of him talking to me, oh, sorry, toward the end of him talking to me said, do you know who talks to you? And I was like, no, I don't know who talks to me. Um, and Odin said, well, you know, maybe you should ask. So I was like, okay. And the thing is, is that years, you know, as I've been doing this for, at that point, I guess it was four years. Is that right? 2011 was when I discovered it. Yeah, that's right. Four years. I'm not a math person. I have an English degree, so you have to excuse me. <laughs> um, four years I'd been doing my channeling and channeled writing at that point, and I'd asked before who it was and had been told, don't ask. You don't need to know. So perhaps at that time I didn't need to know because I wasn't ready. I certainly wouldn't have believed it because I didn't know you could do that channel deities um so anyway that night i got home i was exhausted i didn't do anything the next night i sat down and started writing and it was just like poured out of me and it was bridget who i've been channeling for four years and all this information and I'm getting emotional because i did i started bawling my eyes out <laughs> when this happened. I mean, it was a life-changing moment for me. Um, just, I still have that channeling somewhere. Um, I think it's over there. I'm not going to read it to y'all. It's kind of private, but it changed everything. I mean, it was like, I literally, when I realized that it was her who'd been talking to me, I started seeing where she had been there my entire life. I mean, little bitty things. Like, I had gone to Atlanta with a friend to visit. There's a store in Atlanta called Phoenix and Dragon, which is an amazing, like, witchy metaphysical store. I had gotten Bridget oil because I thought it smelled good. Not because of Bridget. And that had been years ago. You know, I have a, um, a Bridget rosary that I bought because I liked the picture on it, but it's Bridget. It was made by Linnea Weatherstone who wrote Tending Bridget's Flame. Um, she wrote the book, of course, just recently, but I've had that rosary for at least 10 to 15 years. Yeah, I've had it for quite some time. You know, I just started thinking back in my life and just, she'd always been there. And I knew she'd been there before. And I, I, if I remember correctly, I believe in the channeling that came out that I've been hers for a long time. Um, 
that was a very, very emotional night for me. It was life changing. And it was just the tiniest little key at that ritual that opened that door that I could finally push the door open to see what I needed to see. Um, and there's, you know, there's sometimes when you think, oh, I wish I'd known it, the stuff earlier, but I believe stuff like that comes to us when we're ready. I wouldn't have been ready. Um, if I heard when I first started doing it, that it was the goddess Bridget that I was channeling. I would never have believed it because I didn't believe you could do stuff like that. So fast forward to, this was in September of 2015. Fast forward to Imbolt 2016. Um, same group, Spiral Grotto. Um, and of course, between once I found out it was her and not the Morrigan, made complete sense. <laughs> I'm not a Morrigan chick, and that's okay. <laughs> I had give her props. She's great. She, you know, all due respect, but I don't belong to her. Um, so, you know, between September and February, I learning about her, just kind of getting used to what she was, learning more about her. Um, oh, actually, in the, my second year class, um, this was before I found out she was my goddess, my high priestess did a, an exercise where she stood behind us and blew energy like through us by channeling a goddess. So when she asked me, she said, who do you, or channeling a deity, because there may have been gods that came through, maybe. Um, and she asked us, she said, who do you want to come through for you? And I said, whoever wants to come through for me. Um, and it was Bridget. Of course, at the time, I didn't really think about it. I was like, oh, that's cool. It was neat. I mean, it was really cool when she did that. Like, she pushes, she channels the deity into you and pushes the energy through you. So that actually happened, um, I think, in the summertime before Maven. Anyway, so fast forward to... <laughs> uh, Imbolt 2016 and um, my high priestess or the high priestess um, had a friend who channeled Bridget um, who lives in New York and she uh, had her come down for our Imbolc ritual to channel, to channel Bridget. So of course I wasn't going to miss that. <laughs> she And she was a, she's a sweet, sweet, sweet lady, the lady who channels her. And, you know, we're sitting in ritual and I'm just like, I don't know what to, people are asking questions. I'm just kind of, and she's channeling and talking to people and I'm just kind of sitting there and I'm like, you know, when I would, I couldn't think of anything to say. I didn't know what to ask. I mean, seriously, I was just kind of like, oh, totally brain fart. And then I was like, well, I'll ask this. And then as soon as I would try to speak up, someone else would speak up, so. Anyway, I'm sitting there and I have one of my really good friends um, looks, turns to me and he goes, aren't you going to ask a question? Because he knew about all that had been going on. He and I are very connected. We actually believe we were twins in a past life because a lot of the times we run. Oh, hello. Hi, Mama. Look at all the incense coming toward me. We run same similar energy, energy cycles together. Like <laughs> if he's sick, I'm sick with a cold too. Or if he's like having a bad down in the dumps moment I had I mean I am too um so we run in cycles together even though we don't talk to each other regularly I mean we, I see him regularly but we don't it's not like we're talking on the phone all the time so completely separate but we run the similar same cycle so anyway he was sitting next to me and he turns to me and he goes aren't you gonna ask a question I was like I don't know what to ask and he's like um you need to ask if it was her that you if it's her that you're channeling okay and he's gifted too like he's a channel as well like I am it, it, not with the writing but he does a different kind of a different way so anyway um <laughs> I'm sitting there and I finally you know ask the question I say you know I do channeled writing and I just I found out in I'm gonna get emotional again September that it's you I'm channeling <laughs> and I was like is it you and she turned to me and she said, yes. And I just, I lost it. And when I say I lost it, I mean lost it. Like sobbing, like heart, gut, 
sobs, you know, the kind that just rack your whole body. So she gets up, the channel gets up, and I get up, and we meet in the middle around the circle, and I just hold onto her for dear life, and I am, and I'm not an emotionally, especially not out in public, one of those types of people who's gonna lose it, you know, gets really emotional in front of people, I don't know, and I was bawling, <laughs> I was bawling, um, it was so incredible, it was another life-changing moment for me, so, and of course she said, you know, yes, you are my daughter, da 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 um, so yeah, that's how I know Bridget is my goddess, um, I have never experienced anything like that, after I connected with her, I think even in, at Maybun, after the Maybun channeling, that I did with her, the writing, and realized that she's been there my whole life. I even remember saying to one of my friends, I understand now people that love Jesus. I get it now. People who truly love Jesus, <laughs> I get it because that's how I feel about her. Um, and it's not in a worshipful sense. It's just a pure heart love. It's the best way I can, I mean, it's pure love for her. It's, it's not, I don't worship her. I consider her to be like a companion and a friend and a mother to me. She is not someone I'm going to lay down. Well, you know, if she really was here, I might kiss her feet, but she probably wouldn't really want me to necessarily. <laughs> so that's how my relationship with her started. And I've done, of course I do meditations where I'll talk to her. Um, and I go through periods, too, where I don't talk to her as much. So it's not like it's a constant, like, every single day she's like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, I've been a little bit quieter with her the past few months. Um, but I have been feeling the need to start, I don't want to say reconnecting, because I really don't feel like I've disconnected from her in any way, shape, or form. Just start doing more to talk to her regularly. Um... And it makes sense. I mean, she's the goddess of healing and, and inspiration, which is writing. And some some say she's the goddess of plants, too, which I'm interested in getting into that some more. And so, um, but my relationship with her now is, is solid. Um, you know, and she is. She's a very motherly goddess for me, but she also doesn't take any crap. Um, she has kicked, started to try to kick my butt a couple times. Like, I know she's told me before that I need to eat more green things. And I've heard her say to me, if you don't start to make these choices yourself, we will make it to where you don't have a choice. That sort of thing. To where she, to with me at least, she's been motherly and kind, like you might want to consider doing this. And then when I don't listen, it's kind of like, okay, I'm going to have to, you want me to make it harder for you to make the decisions and make do things that are going to make you happier and make you feel better um that um that's kind of how she's been with me lately because I'm not listening as much even though I've started writing more which is one thing she wants me to do um and uh there was one time I was trying to make a decision about something I don't even remember what it was and I asked her I said, what do I do? And she was like, I can't make this decision for you. You have to make it yourself. So it's not like, um, at least my perception of the Christian God, where, oh God, what do I do? What do I do? Guide me, guide me. It's like, she understands that I have free will. She makes suggestions. <laughs> but she's not making my decisions for me. You know, I, I am a human being. I have my own mind, and she's aware of that. Um, I do uh, light candles to her regularly. I am also a flame tender for the Ord Brija International um, every 19 days. And on the 20th, they have 19 days of flame tending, and on the 20th, she's the, t the flame tender. So I have a shift in that I do every 19 days. Um, Every morning that I'm in this room working, because you can't see it, but my office is on the other side of this, of the uh, phone. 
um, camera. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, every morning when I come in to get ready for work, one of the first things I do before I get started is I light candles and one of them is to her. So, um, so I'm also a flame tender, like I said. On the weekends, um, I'm not in here as much, but I do try to light a candle in the bedroom to her when I remember. You know, we, we have those days where we just don't remember to do things. But um, when I shower, I imagine, because you know she's also a goddess of the waters, the goddess, um, the water as healing. Um, another thing, if you, one of my very first videos I did was my dedication video to her. Um, obviously I didn't show the dedication ritual, but I did show a little bit. Um, I waited a year, um, which I was already hers, so I don't know if I even really need to do this, but I waited a year before officially dedicating myself to her. So, um, and one thing that she's asking me to do is write. And I haven't been listening very well. Um, but I'm doing I'm doing better with that. It's, I get really distracted by so, social media and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm digressing. But uh, that's my relationship with her. Oh, another thing I do. I put out offerings every week to her. Um, I do cream. I buy the most... Most, well, God, that sounds snooty, but I buy the most expensive cream I can buy because I figure that it's for her. So it, it, it needs to be of a high quality. Now, if I, if they're out, I usually get her the organic stuff. That's like $4 for a little pint. And, um, I also try to give her the first, uh, when I open it up first, I try to give her some first, um, before I use it. Cause I use it too. I use it in cooking and all that. So. Um, but yes, that is, that is my relationship with her. And I just, you know, until I realized it was her and felt that true connection, I didn't understand what it was. So, um, yeah. And I just want to say this, if you don't have a specific deity, um, you don't need one to be a true pagan. Some of us do, and I think some of us don't. I have friends who don't have specific deities, and they're some of the most powerful witches and wonderful people I know. So, uh, I just, I know sometimes people get caught up on, oh my god, I don't have a deity, I, how am I going to find my deity? It'll come when you're ready. So, um, but anyway. So that's my Bridget story. If you have a deity story, that would be great. Do a video on it. I challenge you um, if you haven't already. So, uh, yeah, there we go. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And as always, I wish you many blessings.